Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel. And of course, as always, let's go ahead and start this video with Bitcoin market. Here we have four hourly Bitcoin chart. And as of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is around $59,000. Yes, unfortunately, Bitcoin pulled back by quite a bit. In fact, like maybe three, four days ago, we were at $64,000. Now we have 59K, so Bitcoin dropped by $5,000. Uh, yes, that's not what we wanted to see. We wanted to see the opposite. We want to see a lag upwards. But look, Bitcoin is a volatile beast. Sometimes Bitcoin <laughs> does not do what we want it to do. But anyway, from a technical standpoint, unfortunately, uh, Bitcoin price action broke below this support, which is not good. Maybe we will be establishing another support at 59K. Who knows? Hopefully, like $58,000 will hold. Yes, $58,000 was the lowest point yesterday. And let's see what is going to happen today. Let's zoom out to this one daily Bitcoin chart because here's actually the same picture. Bitcoin still rem remains within this long lasting triangle. Hopefully, we're going to see another lag upwards. And yes, I do not want to see Bitcoin retesting this support. But look, let's see who knows. All right, guys, let's move on to one monthly Bitcoin chart because I have some interesting patterns for you guys. So many people are asking <laughs> when is the best time to sell Bitcoin and when is the best time to buy? Well, I can tell you when is the best time to buy, but <laughs> sell, never sell. But some people do sell. So <laughs> you may ask where is the top? I guess that's what you want to ask, not necessarily to sell at the top, but where is the top? Well, let's go back to... 2016 this is when the second bitcoin having took place in july and the best time to buy bitcoin would be 500 days before the bitcoin having 500 days before bitcoin having it would be um early 2015 and this is when bitcoin was around like 200 dollars and the uh, the best time to sell bitcoin would be the opposite 500 days after bitcoin having well 500 days after bitcoin having bitcoin uh, would be at around like seventeen thousand dollars not so far away from the top but if you sold at 17k in hindsight back then i guess you would be happy but right now <laughs> not so much because bitcoin like more than twice higher than seventeen thousand dollars at this current point let's move on to the third bitcoin having that took place in may 2020 and uh, yes, if you would bought Bitcoin 500 days before, you would bought Bitcoin technically at the bottom at around like $3,200. That would be a uh, 2019 bottom. And if you would sold Bitcoin 500 days after Bitcoin having, you would sold Bitcoin at, at around $60,000. So you would be close to the top. So that would be um, not necessarily sell, like Bitcoin would top at around that level. So if you could time that, that would be good. So let's move on to the most recent 2024 Bitcoin having that took place in April. So 500 days before that, it would be uh, what late 2022, early 2023. This is when Bitcoin was around like 17, 18 thousand dollars. So that would be 500 days before. And what will happen 500 days after? <laughs> well, obviously, we still do not know what is going to happen in the future, but if uh, history is any guide <laughs> yes, a Bitcoin, most likely will go up in price. So selling right now is like selling Bitcoin uh, in late 2022 at 18K, at uh, late 2018, early 2019, $3,000, and as well as early 2015, $200. So yes, guys, do not sell your Bitcoin right now. All right, guys, let's move on. Bitcoin fear grid index. Today we are 30. We are in fear. <laughs> on a couple of days ago, we were, I guess we were in greed. In fact, if you take a look at this three monthly Bitcoin fear grid index, yes, it is uh, market sentiment is dropping quite rapidly and we're not so far away from the bottom. Uh, I mean, the bottom, this one Bitcoin hit well, like $48,000 in early August. Bitcoin fear grid index was below 20. That would be extreme fear. Right now we are in fear, we are not so far away from 20, we are at 30 only. So look, let's see what's gonna happen in the near future. All right, guys, let's move on. Look at these beautiful patterns. Yes, um, AO, this guy compares um, this current cycle uh, to 
2019 through 2021 cycle. Look, if these patterns would repeat uh, uh, similar, <laughs> yes, it would be quite nice. Moving on, legendary Bitcoiner Hal Finney passed away on this day 10 years ago. Bitcoin is still running hell. <sighs> yes, Hal Finney passed away 10 years ago with health complications. I believe he got paralyzed through some uh, spinal complication. I'm not so sure what exactly it was, but it was complex. So unfortunately he passed away, but his legacy still lives. And so is Bitcoin. Moving on, huddling Bitcoin at 50K versus 1 million versus zero dollars. Yes, huddle Bitcoin no matter what and no matter at what price. All right, guys, let me give you a quick update about Bitcoin spot ETFs, what happened yesterday. As we can see, BlackRock unfortunately bought nothing. This is probably one of the few zeros since Bitcoin spot ETFs have been launched. And then we have Fidelity also bought nothing. Uh, Bitwise sold 7 million and ARK sold 102 million. What's going on with ARK? That's probably one of the biggest uh, selling um, days from ARK I have seen. And then we have Grayscale sold 18 million. So therefore the net flow for the day will be minus 127 million dollars. And therefore it breaks like eight days positive streak. Like in August 23rd, we had 252 million positive flows, then 26, 200 million. And now we have minus $127 million. Look, it is what it is. Once again, Bitcoin is volatile beast. So therefore BlackRock now holds almost $21 billion worth of Bitcoin. Fidelity, almost 10 billion. Bitwise, 2 billion. Arc, 2.5 billion. Grayscale sold 19.7 billion. And the accumulation is almost 18 billion dollars yes yesterday before this selling day it was more than 18 billion so that would be officially new all-time high but because of yesterday we had this minus 127 million so therefore we are back to high 17 billion dollars but <laughs> nonetheless we did reach all-time high yesterday fantastic all right guys moving on nasdaq looks to offer bitcoin options following Rival New York Stock Exchange plans. Let's take a look. Nasdaq is seeking approval from the regulators to allow the launch of trading of options tied to the price of Bitcoin. I don't know if this is a good idea. The proposed Nasdaq Bitcoin index options is uh, in partnership with index provider CF Benchmark and would track the CME CF Bitcoin real time index operated on the Chicago Mercenet Exchange exchange. So this is what the president of Nasdaq stated. This collaboration further combines the innovation crypto landscape with the resiliency and reliability of traditional security markets. That would mark a significant milestone for expanding the mature of the digital asset market. Look, I think this is a good idea because they would make Bitcoin even more volatile because they would gamble options on top of Bitcoin and it would happen most likely on Bitcoin ETF, not necessarily on a real Bitcoin. But look, who knows? Let's see what's going to happen. There are actually Bitcoin options already. They just want to um, make it even bigger. So let's see. Let's move on. Fantastic Bitcoin chart. It represents on the bottom we have <laughs> Bitcoin and Bitcoin adoption S curve. So the S curve is on the top. On the bottom we have Bitcoin. So uh, yes, guys, we still very and very early. Another fantastic chart. It's actually my favorite chart of the day. It represents high yield credit and Bitcoin cycles. Obviously, every cycle of Bitcoin has a different color. Right now we're on this purplish one. But look. The most important thing, we're still at the bottom. Yes, Bitcoin bull market still has not even started yet. I think what we had back in 2023 and 2024 is just recovery phase, but the bull market has not started. Another chart, <laughs> look, this is what Bitcoin looks like after Bitcoin having, well, like four or five months already passed. <laughs> yes, it would be very silly to sell Bitcoin right now because, so as we know that Bitcoin historically appreciated by high multiples so no selling bitcoin right now would not be a good idea and lastly let's take a look at this quick video where anthony pampiano will explain what's going on with bitcoin let's take a look check out bitcoin uh prices this morning they're falling sharply dipping below the fifty-nine thousand 
Uh, level in overnight trading. The sell-off was said to be sparked by a wave of leverage-driven liquidation after a drop in Ethereum. Join us now to discuss the crypto market is Anthony Pompliano, founder and CEO of uh, Professional Capital Management. We could probably go back in time with almost identical price movements to identical levels than we've had yawn in the last three months talking about it. We've seen a break under 59 a couple of times, only to go uh, back above 64, 65. Um, what do we make of it? Well, I think it's just sideways summer, right? You know, people kind of saw this huge run up after the uh, Bitcoin ETF got approved uh, earlier this year. Uh, a lot of capital flew into that, both retail and some institutional. Uh, and when the summer hit, uh, people, I think, kind of just went away. And so as we've traded sideways, there has been volatility. Uh, but I do think that uh, if you look at the historical kind of bull run cycles, uh, kind of end of Q3 into Q4 is when things start to pick up. Uh, and you'll start to see, you know, kind of the asset price rise from there. I mean, because some people, no matter what, hold Bitcoin, does it not take a lot of selling to, to have pretty big moves in the price? Is it like on thin volume, would you say? You, just, you, you definitely have an illiquid asset, right? Is you know, it? A lot of times, depending on which metric you look at, whether it's one year, two year, uh, it could be 60 or 70 percent of the assets being held by people who are long term oriented. That's what I mean. And so uh, it's very different than you know many other financial assets, but also uh, leverage has uh, definitely increased in the use uh, in the market. And so whenever you see uh, kind of an illiquid asset, you get you know a good amount of leverage in there, uh, it can move in both directions with more volatility. And if you compare you know, Bitcoin to maybe something like gold, they're both sound money principles, but Bitcoin's one-year volatility is 0.35, gold's is 0 0.09. Hmm. And so that volatility is part of what draws people that they want the upside uh, of something like Bitcoin, but they still want the sound money principle. So they still want to trade it. Um, what what will Bitcoin's reaction be if the economy gets hit hard, as Barry uh, Knapp was just saying, he thinks will happen? What will Bitcoin's reaction be if there's a soft landing? Yeah. So. I think that the more people talk about a potential recession, the less likely that it is that we're going to have a recession, right? People are kind of eyes wide open. They're paying attention to that. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, a lot of us criticize the Fed and rightfully so for many things. But one thing that they did get right is they've kind of reloaded their ammunition. And so now we've got rates over 5%. They've sold off $2 trillion or so uh, off their balance sheet. If we get to some sort of market slowdown or, or downturn, uh, the Fed seems to be more trigger happy. They're a little bit more sensitive. You saw this with the two emergency rate cuts in 2020. Uh, and I do think that they have that ammunition now to fight that market downturn. But, so, but what's it mean for Bitcoin? Because I, I still can't figure out like what the correlations are necessarily. I, it doesn't I, always I think, do what I expect it to do. Yeah, I think that if uh, cheap capital floods into the market, people will go and they will push out on the risk curve. Uh, the nice thing about Wall Street is that Bitcoin is still considered one of the riskier assets in their portfolio. And so I think assets will flow there. Uh, but also, I think that if you look at the crypto industry, they look at this as an asset that they buy and they hold. They do not sell this asset. And so it'll remain illiquid. You'll have Wall Street kind of allocating to it. Uh, and as we've seen, when interest rates have gone down or cheap capital has flooded into the market in the past, Bitcoin has done very, very well. So as Pompliano said that this is just a regular market, Bitcoin just going sideways, just like it has been going back in uh, 2020 after Bitcoin having. And additionally, he said that if it would go into the recession, Federal Reserve would print shit load of money, just like they did back in 2020, 2021, when Corona started. And guess what? Bitcoin would skyrocket. So yes, Bitcoin would benefit from their stupidity. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think about Pompliano. Comment below, subscribe, and like this video.